Hi, this is Bill Olette, and today we have Scott Sunvor from Six Sensor Labs, which is a company that's in the uh, MIT Global Founder Skills Accelerator here at the uh, Martin Trust Center for MIT Entrepreneurship. And Scott, welcome. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about uh, beachhead markets and how to apply the concepts that you've heard to a real situation, someone who's working through it right now. Um, Scott is working with Shireen. Tell, tell us a little background about yourself, Scott, first. Yeah, sure. So I was, uh, I was born in Norway, moved to Florida, came to MIT, then uh, met Shireen and yourself, and uh, now we started this company. We're developing uh, portable sensors for people with food allergies, so something they can bring with them on the go uh, to a restaurant, make sure that they can actually uh, eat whatever food they're being served. It's beautiful. And so you're the technical person and Shireen's the business person? That's correct, yeah. And, and you have... Um, Shireen has, has lived with the, the problem that you're talking, that you're solving, right? She has, she has. So yeah. Shireen has celiac disease and she's been dealing with that for a long time now. So we're really, uh, we're developing a product for, for someone on the team. So it's really a personal connection that we have. And so what's your personal passion about uh, this, this problem? Uh, I really just, I love helping people, I love helping Shireen, and I think that this is uh, a situation where you can really make something really user friendly and really helpful for someone uh, where they don't have that currently. That's wonderful. That's what Norwegians do. They're very <laughs> helpful. Oh yeah. Okay. So tell me, what questions do you have about the beachhead market? Yeah, so uh, we started segmenting our market and uh, we looked into a bunch of different types of people and so then we kind of ran into some difficulties with what, what's the best way to start to really understand which one of these market segments you should use as your beachhead market. So when you, when you look at the various markets, you're going to come up with a number of beachhead markets and you're going to narrow it down and then you could fall into paralysis. And one of the things is you have to you know, look at the one, you look at three of them might work and three of them might not work. Mm -hmm. But you might be agonizing about which of those three. Well, the key is that there's multiple paths to success and you're going to have to choose one. And which one do you feel the most comfortable with? Is it, is it one that you're passionate about? Is it one where you think the, ri the, the risk is low? Is it one you know, that, that's more strategic than the others? And so that's what you're going to, but you don't want it to be too big and you don't want it to be too small. It's, if it's 20 million to 100 million a year, I think that's a great beachhead market. Okay. But it, if it's $1 million a year, that's too, too low. If it's $2 billion, that's too big. Mm -hmm. But I, I think as you look at this, don't sweat it. If there's three of them, pick the one that you think is best. Don't worry if the other one might be 10% better. The worst thing you can do is, is not do anything, just to be sitting there with paralysis saying, which one is which better or not? But I know with Shereen and yourself, you're not going to do that. You're going to keep pushing forward. So once we've selected our beachhead market, what are some ways that we can go about and actually validate that we have the correct beachhead market? Well, that really is, the, that, that's the question. I mean, anybody can select a beachhead market. The question is whether it's the right beachhead market or not. And, and um, that's where you have to dig in. You have to go out, to, you know, do primary customer research. Now it's not just observing, you're interacting with them and you're going to make up a brochure and you're going to say to your target customer, what do you think about this? Now we're not selling the product at that point. We're still in inquiry versus advocacy. We're in inquiry mode. We're not selling. We're in inquiry. We're, we're, we're testing. Is this, does this work? Do you like this? What kind of value does it bring? And uh, would you buy it ultimately? Um, but we're not selling. And so if they respond well, great. If they don't, then we have to adjust and see what, what, they, what they would buy. Mm -hmm. um, but we need to get, you know, get out there and interact with customers. Now there's also some other great ways that we can put it online and we can see the click stream and to see whether people do it. So for your product, I, I would do a Google ad and say, do pe are people interested in this gluten product? Mm -hmm. And there are certain websites you can see. And if you put a nice ad and nobody clicks on it, well, that's terrible. I mean, yeah. um, we had one of our students that had an idea and they put it over on the bus stop over here and they tested it in, in, in the, the New Enterprises class and nobody did the QR code. So okay. they abandoned the idea. So they thought that was their target customer or the beachhead market, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I think in your case, you would do this, and you could try different ads, and then once they go in, you can, you, you can kind of, I wouldn't ask them for surveys, I would just kind of do things that kind of draw out what they would do. You know, do they click on, oh, would you be interested in, you know, uh, a product that, that gave you a gluten reading within, you know, two minutes at the restaurant, mm -hmm. 20 minutes or something like that, and then see how they respond. Yep. Um, that's what, and that's clear, unambiguous data that you would get. Now the problem is you have to also not just beta test the beachhead market's interest 
um, in the product. You also have to beta test, as, as Dharmesh Shah says, their wallet, whether they're willing yep. to pay. And we haven't gotten to that stage yet. But the first part of this is, are they interested in it? And then later we're going to beta test that. So that's how, you, again, you're absolutely right. Select the market, but then how do we validate it? You would use kind of primary observational research, get out there and talk to them. You could also use digital tools, but make sure you're in uh, inquiry mode, not advocacy mode. You're not supposed to be selling. Got it. Do you have any examples of companies that really kind of botched their first beachhead market and uh, really just went the wrong way, and then what they did about that, if that yeah. happened? So in, in one of my companies um, that we first went out after the, uh, the medical market, um, it's sensible, and we realized, oh my goodness, this is just going to take much longer than what we, we signed up for, mm. and we're going to have to hire doctors, we're going to have to raise more money and do all that kind of stuff. So while that was a great market as it turned out, it was something that didn't work for us and was going to take too long. So then we changed our strategy and we came back and we went after industrial design instead. Um, that turned out well. Um, I think other ones you can look at, and I won't name the company, but I've seen other people who go after huge markets. They say, I'm going to go after energy storage in the automotive market. Well, you don't go after the biggest you know, market first. Yeah. You have to build your way up to get to that market. And by going to that market, you're trying to boil the ocean before you have capability. If, think about it, if you're a sports team, you, you don't play the best team first. You kind of play teams along the way that you can mm -hmm. build up your confidence, build up your capability, and then ultimately you go after the biggest one. So the biggest mistakes I've seen, um, uh, uh, the situation I described that I was involved with was, and I caused, was um, is when people go after the biggest market first, going after the automotive market before yeah. building up a head of steam to get there. Okay. Uh, I have one last question for you. So uh, in your book, you mentioned that there's three main characteristics that really make a market. Uh, yeah. What do you think are the most important of those? Well, the three, the three things are, first of all, it has to be the same product. Everybody gets that, so that's really easy. Yeah. The second one is it has to have a similar sales process. That's what people sometimes don't get as much. It's like you've got to be able to take a salesman and put him in this customer, and then put him in that customer, and he can sell it here and there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a similar value proposition, similar sales cycle, similar words, and similar references. The, the, the one that I think is probably the most important is, is that's overlooked is word of mouth. That's the third characteristic. Okay. Does, it, when I define a market, if I get customer A, will he tell other customers within that market? Mm -hmm. Because that's how you go viral. That's how you get this exponential growth. And if you don't have the word of mouth, you won't drive the cost of sales down. And you won't get this, the speed of adoption that you need as a startup. As a, a startup, we're an attacker. We don't have a lot of we don't have a lot of resources. Right. How are we gonna How are we gonna make be successful against these other people? And if we go too slow, we're gonna show our hand, and they're gonna be able to do that. So word of mouth is critically important to get get the market moving quickly. So once we figure out what works, then word of mouth will produce that. So out of the three, I think the product is 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 obvious. I think the word sales cycle is is not as obvious, but but word of mouth is critical. That's great. Thanks a lot, Bill. Well, I have one question for you. Yeah, sure. What are you going to do when Shireen goes out and gets married this summer for your team? Oh, I'll have so much more free time then. I'll be able to work more effectively. <laughs> you engineers always say that. Thanks a lot. Great. Thank Take you. Take care.